conceptual perspectives people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements. <laughs> Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. that needs to be given to this is going to demand that I do more than one part. I don't know if I'll post all three parts just in different segments on the same video or if I will do three separate videos or whatever, but I want to really give this some attention because I think it's something that is so important to where we are in our journey as a people in this country. Uh, say what you want about Charleston White. Love him, hate him, whatever. Uh, I'm one of those people, and I think you know this about me. Uh, I don't get caught up in messengers. I listen to messages. Uh, I vet messages. I I dissect messages. I'm looking for truth. Don't care who bring it to me. I don't care if it's Candace Owens. I don't care if it's Umar Johnson. I don't care if it's Tyreek Nasheed. I don't care if it's Dr. Boris Watkins. I don't care if it's Dr. Claude Anderson. Um, I want truth. I want to be able to break it down. Dr. Naeem Arbar, Dr. Uh, Francis Chris Wilson. I'm looking for truth. Uh, and people, it, and it comes in all different ways, not just in the people you like, not just people in the back. And I'm not saying I dislike the brother. I'm just saying I know there are some people that are going to be on here that don't feel the brother. Uh, and, and I get that. But here's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about this truth. And I, and it, 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 it touches so, so close home. Somebody was talking to him. Uh, look like they may have been interviewing him, uh, uh, one of those impromptu, unofficial interviews or whatever, and they brought up a question, or they made a statement, and the statement was, what do you feel about, and I forget the person who they quoted, but him saying that uh, loving a woman, uh, and I'm going to put in black women, because this is specifically to me about loving our women, uh, but loving a woman is a sign of weakness. And I immediately like, okay, I want to see where this goes. And he immediately looked at him, kind of tilted his head. He said, you know, how in the hell do you come to that conclusion? There's nothing weak about loving a woman. Let me say a black woman. There's nothing weak about it. And he says, I, if you show me a black man that says loving a black woman is weakness, I'll show you a black man that wasn't real by a weird, real man. I 100% agree with that. I will also say that when you show me somebody who says that, that there's a level of vitriol and hatred 
for the black woman. And I will say that this rise in that sentiment, and it's a rise, this is not an uncommon sentiment. Uh, it is a rising sentiment among black males. And this is why black men lead is so important because we're not properly socializing black men into their true responsibility, their true place, their true nature. They are a hybrid of social engineering that has made them turn against the very essence of what they were really truly designed to do. And so when I look at this and I see that, it is not an accident to me. And, uh, and anybody that knows me knows I've put tens of thousands of hours of research into understanding the plight of blacks. So I don't speak off the cuff. I'm not just talking off my head. I'm talking about what I've observed. Don't mean I can't be wrong. It means that I'm making an educated and informed statement. That it is not an accident as we see the rise in the sentiment of loving a black woman is tantamount to weakness or is the equivalent of weakness or represents weakness. We, it, it's not a coincidence that we see this rise at the same time we see the rise in the ambiguity of sexuality, the ambiguity of what is, how we define what's gay. I'm not gay, I just did this. I'm not gay, I just did this. Because what you're seeing is any time that I hear a man say that, it makes me feel that he's more connected to, now he may have a physical attraction to women, he may have a social impulse to be with women or to sleep with women or to procreate with women, but there's a natural draw to loving his fellow brother. Now, in the right context, you're supposed to love your brother, but not the way you love your woman. And there's a confusion in that because we haven't guided the very nature of the development of the black man. Again, this is why black men lead or any type of socialized socialization is important. Why? Because here, here's the thing. You have to be able to understand why you are. And what we teach young black males at the Odyssey Project and Black Men Lead is there's a reason why at a certain point when you begin to go through puberty your voice deepens you become physically stronger than your female counterpart of the same age you become larger and more intimidating it's not to intimidate her it's not to harm her it's not to dominate her it's to protect her. That is a natural built-in mechanism. It's in every other male species on the planet. So it would not make sense that we're the only species where we don't, we don't, we're not supposed to protect the women of the species. Now, obviously, you know, you got the black widow spider and that's some crazy shit that goes on. But we're talking about, and you just observe, uh, lions have prides, the male lion actually his main and primary responsibility in that in that pride is to protect the female lionesses who actually do most of the hunting he's to ensure that they're safe and he's to ensure when shit get hectic he comes and handles it that is what we're built to do now if you want to know whether something is good for you or not look at what your enemy is pushing about that so when we talk about enemies we talk about white supremacy right and so when we look at white supremacy what are they pushing and what are they not pushing oh they're pushing this anti uh anti-woman misogyny in music in 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 stories in 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 in, 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 in so many different ways what are they not pushing love show me love in R&B where the man is loving his wife, being faithful to his wife coming home from work you know, uh, Tank pointed this out when he talked about uh, how the cat, I can't think of his name now, something Smith uh, from, from the UK can sing Stay With Me and it goes to the top of the charts and it gets limited bandwidth if someone black sings it or talks about love and family, it gets limited bandwidth because that's not what they're pushing in the black community. They are pushing the hatred that black men have for women. Why? Because the last thing they want black men to do is a real soon 
a, a, a role that has been abdicated long ago where we stand in our homes, we stay in our homes, we fight and protect the women and the children in our homes. Do you realize when we talk about childhood sexual abuse that the predominance of those that are abused are abused in homes where the biological father is not present? All of these things are not accidents. They are the culmination of a failure on our part and mechanisms and machinations and social engineering on their part. And we are participating in it because we are buying into a dumbass idea that loving a black woman is somehow a sign of weakness. Now, let me show you something. When you look at the rise of that sentiment, again, you see a rise in homosexual behavior. And this isn't the idea of what we used to look at in our age growing up and we would see a, a homosexual or a gay guy. This is in the down low spectrum. This is in the guy you look at and you go, okay, he's gotta be straight. But you find out some shady shit's going on in the back room. This isn't about me and homosexuality. This is about me and the behavior of men who are supposed to be loving our women, but actually have a stronger gravity towards other men and, 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 and where it's coming from. It's coming from the hatred of women and the idea that's being pushed and we don't get it. There is literally propaganda pushing this. Now, again, when you leave the home, you leave children outside of the scope of what's best for them in development. The home is designed to be an environment of safety, security, uh, wholesomeness, where it is to culminate the best development of our youth. So it needs masculine energy, it needs feminine energy, it needs the merging of these energies or the sinking of these energies, we call it synergy. And when you do that, you create an environment where you produce children who flourish in a society, even when that society is inherently hostile towards them. But when you don't do it, you produce children who are antisocial, counterproductive, in a, incapable of really truly rising. And even though they may be successful in one area, they're struggling in all the other areas. And because they're struggling in all the other areas, they are not in a position to produce wholesome offspring. So they produce children who are at a deficit. And we get this on and on cycle. I've been writing about this for years. Check out Born in Captivity, my 19th book, check it out. So I'm gonna, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna talk to some more guys. I'm gonna get their input on it. But I remember some things. I was reared by a man's man. I was reared by uh, my great grandfather, my grandmother's father had to drop out uh, in the second grade to go out in the field. Uh, and work with his father uh, at seven years old because he was a sharecropper and they needed every hand they could get just to break even and p keep food on the table. And I've heard those stories and the things he taught me as a man is um, unbelievable. It has held me together, it has kept me going. Um, but the one thing he did is he held down my grandmother he treated her with a level of reverence that I will never forget. He set the standard of how I had, but, but something he asked me when I was a child that I wouldn't dare ask 90% of the black males in today's culture. He asked me as a child and I spoke as a child. He asked me, I had to be 10, maybe 11. And he had at eight stopped my grandmother from disciplining me. And at this time, he hadn't told me why. He stopped her from disciplining me. He stopped her from basically being in any role where she was dominating me. He took that role. I became solely his responsibility when it became what I was gonna do, what I wasn't gonna do, domination. And he asked me a question. He said, you going fishing? We fished a lot. Um, one of my loves, we fished a lot. And he said, you go fishing, you're out in the boat and the boat capsized. It's you, it's your mom, and it's your wife. Who do you say first? And immediately out of my mouth, you know, I'm 10, just just shortly got from underneath the skirt tail of my mom. I'm like, I saved mama. He said, no, 
Your wife is your responsibility. You save her before you save anybody. She is that connected to you. She is your lifeline, you're her lifeline. You save her, and then you do the best to save your mom. And I'm like, that don't make no sense. And I didn't get it until I started to understand the importance of the role that we both play as husband and wife. Now this ain't your girlfriend and your side piece. This is your wife. And the problem is because we've spurned marriage and we don't understand it and we haven't seen it modeled correctly, we've seen hybrids and, 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 and tore down versions of it. We don't have a lot of respect for it anymore. And, and it's easy to escape now. So we just toss up our hands and run off. So we don't see the value in that person that's on the other side there. So, but what he showed me was that, and it was constant lessons after that. And then at 12, he told me why he stopped my grandmother from um, disciplining me and putting her hands on me and anything like that. He said that if I, if I allow her to continue, I would, have allowed, I would have been allowing you to be trained to be dominated by a woman and you could never lead her. I would have trained you to see her as being more physically uh, threatening and you would have never been able to stand up and or had a willingness to defend. Think about it. If, if somebody's always whooping your ass and you finally get up older, are you inclined to go save somebody from, from whooping a person that's a female? Because in your mind, she can take care of herself. One's been whooping my ass all my life. You got to think about how we are developing, how we're thinking, and how we're approaching women. There's absolutely nothing weak about loving a woman. Matter of fact, uh, another man that I respect so much taught me something. I was asking him about somebody we had just met. And we were going to be dealing with moving in the far, moving forward. And I said, what do you think about it? He said, I can't tell you yet. I haven't met his wife. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, you will be able to discern the character of a man by observing the continence of his wife. When you speak his name and in, 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 when you speak his name to her in his absence, watch her face, look in her eyes, watch how she moves and acts around him. Does he does 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 he make her feel comfortable? Does he make her feel safe? Uh, uh, is there anxiety? Is there trepidation? Is there fear? Look at it because how he treats her, his greatest responsibility is going to tell you how he's going to behave with you and the things that you entrust him with. To me, one of the first things I'm going to do is when I'm meeting somebody and I'm considering hooking up with them for business or maybe they might be a new dude that, you know, is in my circle or coming into my circle here at the shop. You know, I'm listening to how he talk about his wife. If he's one of those guys that brings his wife up here, I'm looking at how he handles her when she's up here, but also how she responds to him while she's up here. Because that tells me who he is. And the problem right now is we've lost our damn mind. You cannot exemplify strength without exemplifying your number one responsibility, which is a protector. You are supposed to be a protector before you are supposed to be a provider. One of the reasons we're seeing this constant rise in intimate partner violence and intimate partner homicide uh, as it pertains to black women because there's no love for the black woman in, 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 in large numbers and no I'm not speaking collectively because I don't fuck with nobody that don't know how to treat a black woman you, you can't hang with me and be mishandling your woman because we gonna sit down and we gonna talk about it we're going to get up and we're going to get together and we're going to talk about what's going on. If she's out of line, we'll deal with that. But what we're not going to do is carry ourselves in a way that isn't reflected. I'm going to tell you something like that. At the end of the day, we're going to be judged and our outcome is going to be a result of how we treat our women. It's that simple. And, and ladies... I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to you too because how we handle how, how you guys handle us is going to ultimately be the determining factor of how things turn out for you. We are one and sitting up and allowing ourselves to be turned in on one another to do what is unnatural. We can't survive naturally with, without one another. Then that 
if it's natural, then that's the way it's meant to be. We don't have to give it a great deal of thought. We can observe it through history and we can see how it performs and we can know what to expect. It's not going to produce perfection. That's not why we're here, but it can produce power. Something else that we're missing. Marriage is a wealth hack. And you don't think they know that? That's who taught it to me. Marriage is a wealth hack. And they've got us hating each other. They've got us divorcing uh, each other. They've got us breaking because they understand what happens when we come together and we solidify and we, 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 we join together and we care about one another beyond superficial bullshit. We care about each other to a, to a death that I'm willing to do something. Dr. King said something, and I have two versions of Dr. King. I have the Dr. King that I'm not that fond of, the one that... Uh, went prancing around the U.S. talking about dreams and stuff like that. Uh, to me, my study of history tells me he was used as a buffer to keep black people at bay, to get them excited about things that would not produce power. Integration damn near destroyed us. But, but I also have Dr. King that I am, I admire. And that's the Dr. King of the last year and a half where he realized, hey, they're using me. My people are suffering. I'm integrating my people into a burning house. So I'm going to take my people and we're going to fight for this check. We're going to get reparations. We're going to get our 40 acres and a mule. We're going to get this. We're going. And shortly after that, he was dead. And he knew that was going to be the outcome. And something he said, he says that a man that doesn't have something for which he is willing to die is not fit to live. And we got a bunch of black men willing to die for shit, but it's stupid shit. It's shit that, that you dying over blocks you don't own. Dying over the f somebody kick your kick. Somebody stepped on your kick. Somebody said that. Somebody got out of line. And they running rampant over you and you won't do nothing to them. But we killing each other and we killing our women. And I'm going to tell you something. As long as our women are not safe in our presence, we aren't men, collectively. That's where it starts. You protect your women, your elderly, and your children. They have to be safe. And there has to be a level of benevolence and love in order to do that, to be willing to say, I'm willing to die for mine. And, 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 and if you're not willing to go to the mat, something's wrong and and you know and, and you can see you know that's why it's so easy for these young cats to call somebody that says i love this woman or i'm, I'm gonna do this for a woman or I'm, I'm doing this or i believe in our women i love our women it's so easy for them to call you a simp and the truth of the matter is the simpletonness in themselves can't see how they are being used to destroy their own people through asinine uh, proclamations like loving a, loving a woman is a sign of weakness. No, loving a black woman is the beginning of strength. Loving a black woman is one of the biggest implications or expressions of power and strength. You don't get to, to truly be expressive in who you are until you are able to love a black woman. Black woman, this isn't giving you a, a pass and an excuse on a lot of stuff that I see y'all doing. This is me talking specifically to black man about something that was put out there. And I'm glad that someone with a bigger platform, Charleston White, sit up and nailed it. He didn't pull punches. He didn't make room to go around it. Point blank and simple. You can't tell me you're strong if you can't love a black woman. You definitely can't tell me you're a strong black man and can't love a black woman. The most radical thing a black man can do in expression of his love for himself is to love a black woman. <laughs> so much of what can come out of you, she's capable of getting out of. So much of this vision and idea and these things you have in your head that you're struggling to get out belong in her spiritual womb. 
She can birth the vision. She's designed to do it. She's an incubator of greater things, but you haven't taken care of her, so she's giving you hell because that's what you planted. And you don't understand that. A woman is incubating. She takes what you give you and she what you give her and she multiplies it. She enhances it. She grows it. Give her a house, she'll turn it into a home. Give her groceries, she'll turn it into a meal. Give her your seed, she'll take it for 40 weeks. Incubate it inside of herself and bring back your progeny, your offspring, your seed. Fully, fully manifested into human, human form. But if you give her darkness, if you give her pain, if you give her abandonment, if you give her physical abuse, she will give you hell. And what we are living right now is the manifestation of failure. If we can't learn how to love our women, we're never going to see the fullness of who we are. Because our so much of what we can plant and grow has to go through her. That's why you'll never see me with a white woman. She can't manifest what I need to grow because my seeds have the pains of my ancestors, the hurts of my ancestors, the frustrations of my ancestors. My desires are to reach beyond what they were able to do and do something greater because I carry the burden of their hurts and their pains. And they and, and no white woman can possibly relate to that. I'm not done, but I'm going to get off of here for now. Sit down and probably get me a drink. I need to unwind because this has got me so wound that we're, this is where we're at to where we actually think we're saying something smart when we say, when we say loving a black woman is a sign of weakness. Some mommy issues out there. Some grandma issues out there There's Some daddy issues out there There's Some shit that didn't go down right in your life If you think That is even close to truth And like I said If you want to know Whether something is good for you or not Watch what they're doing They're not pushing black love They all for the misogyny though They amping up They, give, they turning motherfuckers into millionaires For mishandling black women Talking to them, calling them bitches and hoes, and and, and 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 dropping babies in them, and all this other stuff. They 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 they, they, they drop. They making a millionaires for pushing the drug culture. They making a millionaires for pushing the gay culture. Drop a song about love. Drop a song about being one with the family. Drop a drop a song about that and see how far it goes. Now look over in their genres. They got those songs. And you got to ask why we don't have them. <laughs> you got to look deeper than what's going on. Ain't nothing more frustrating than thinking you on, sh on shit and you being played. What the very thing you were built to do is the thing you hate the most. <laughs> and you think you winning. Look, I'm out of here. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do the rest of the segments on because I'm definitely not done, but I'm done right now. Uh, but I'm definitely going to get this to you as soon as I can. Um, this is crazy to me. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day until you see